Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be installing Android on Proxmox. So let's get started. Now there are a couple of operating systems you can choose from to install Android onto x86. One being Android x86, but that has performance issues. No matter what I try or what I do, I really can't get past the performance issues that Android x86 has. So that's out of the picture. Next we have Prime OS. Now Prime OS hasn't been updated in a while, so that's something I don't want to touch because it's just outdated. Which leads us to Bliss OS. Now Bliss OS is open source, it does have a GitHub, and you can compile it yourself if you want. And the latest update also allows you to use VertGL, which if you don't know what that is, I'll leave a video link on the top left for you guys. I've done a video on it before, but it allows you to basically use graphic acceleration through Proxmox. So Bliss OS basically checks off all the boxes that I need. Now, before we get into the installation, I am gonna show you what the desktop looks like. So here we are on Bliss OS, and this is basically the wallpaper that it comes with. You do have the Play Store, but there is a version that you could install that has open apps instead of G apps if that's what you want. But I installed the G apps version and Play Store does work. All I had to do was just sign in and there we have it. I have all my apps or whatever I need to do. Now I did install a few apps on this, but this is mainly for trying to get Android to work on my server, which allows me to use Android only apps for my environment. So if you have a baby monitor or a security webcam or something like that that only has an Android or iPhone app, at least I could install this onto my server and use it remotely. So this is what that is basically made for. Now, if you're wondering what I'm using it, this is called Remote Viewer, which allows me to use Spice. So that's how I get the accelerated graphic to show up on my desktop instead of trying to use VNC over console. Now on the desktop, you have two different menu options. You can slide this up and then you get the menu or you can press this like a start menu on the bottom left. Now they do have something called About Bliss, which gives you all the information, uh, actually what it's using. Right now it's using VirtGL and the website and everything that you could take a look at, even this, uh, the source code from GitHub, everything that you need. Another thing they have here is calibration. So if you are using this on a regular PC and you need to calibrate the touchscreen, you could use the calibration. Or you could take a look at the kernel, which I think I believe it's, yeah, 6.1. So it's pretty new, but it's not the latest. The latest is 6.6 .6 as of right now, but 6.1 is still very, very new. Now you can see that after I install this, I am a couple of versions behind. So you could see this is 11.458. I'm on 11.448. And keep in mind that this is also Android 11. It's not Android 14 or 13 or whatever it is. It's on Android 11. Now, if you want to rotate your screen, they do have an application called this, uh, which is, I think, Selection. Let me see if I pull up the main. Let me close this out. Pull up the big menu. Come on. Do this. Let's pull this out and I believe that oh, set orientation, you could use this program and kind of set what you want, landscape, portrait, stuff like that. And um, you could leave it as disabled, that's what I have it. And it'll just keep it in a screen like this. But if you have any apps that require vertical resolution, you can switch it over to that. Now, as far as settings goes, there's not much things going on in settings, um, right over here. It's the standard settings that you would see, how much storage it's using, 65%, but I did install some games in here. Uh, there's a few other things that you go through, which is the normal Android settings. Uh, you can configure what they call the boring droid settings, enable PC mode, full screen apps, stuff like that. Uh, but that's basically about it. There's not much going on as far as the settings go, but here you can see, look, it's Android 11. Now heading back into the main desktop, we do have the Play Store. So we, uh, like I showed you before, you can download apps if you want on here. I did manage to install Angry Birds on here. So Angry Birds is loaded right here. And you can see the graphics is moving around. Now I couldn't get the sound working. Uh, I think through the VM and stuff like that, it has to be a particular audio card, but I couldn't get the sound working. So we're gonna have to play around with that, but I'm not, again, using this for sound really. I'm just using this for uh, monitoring applications and stuff, but yeah. You could see me playing Angry Birds. And it's doing all the animation and everything that it needs to. It's pretty impressive, but not all games work. So if I was to go back into the menu, now let me drag this up, go here, and try a different game like Asphalt 8. It will try to load, but it doesn't work. So I think this has to do with the graphic drivers and stuff like that, so it's causing it not to load. So you'll see it's trying to load, and then it'll just kick you out of the game. Unless this time it decides it will work, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, there you go, it kicks you out. Now, YouTube did work for a good amount of time, but 
for some reason right now, everything that I try to play is turning green, which I don't know why it's doing that, but I did have this working before I was filming this video. So I'm not particularly sure what's going on with this green screen, but I'm guessing I might have to reinstall the app or not. Anyway, that's just a quick preview of Bliss OS. So you could do with it what you want, but yeah, it does install on Proxmox pretty well. Now let's jump into the installation because it did take me a couple of tries just to get the install to work correctly. So we're gonna be installing Android on our Proxmox and the first thing we need to do is create a VM. Now there are a couple of steps that we need to do. So first we're gonna name this, we're gonna call this Bliss OS 2 because I already have a Bliss OS 1. I'm gonna hit next. And then on the OS SSD here, I'm gonna choose the actual Bliss ISO that I downloaded earlier, which I'll leave a link down in the description below for that. Hit next. System OS, this is where you would choose VertGL GPU, which allows for our graphic acceleration. The machine would be Q35 and you will need to use UEFI. And from here, you would have to choose wherever you wanna EFI storage. And then you have to uncheck pre-enrolled keys. And then you hit next after that, uh, give it some storage. I don't know why I did this, but I actually ended up switching this to SATA instead, but you could leave it as SCSI. I think it's not a problem. Now I'm gonna choose uh, SSD for this. And we have 32 gigabytes, that's fine. If you're using an SSD like I am, just remember to turn on discard. CPU, I'm using two. Memory, I was using four gigs of RAM which it looked to me like it should need a little bit more depending on what you're using. So six gigs or eight gigs would be good. I'm just gonna leave it at four. Network confirm and then that's it. All right, now this is blank. We can start this up. Head over into console. Let it boot up for a second. Now, what's cool, see you see there's a VM option. I'm not gonna boot from it, but I'm gonna show you the options. And in here you can see it's actually using VertGL, FFmpeg. But yeah, we're gonna head directly into installation. It's telling you you need a UEFI boot system. So that's what we need to build. First, what you need to do is create and modify partitions. Hit no. And then from here, we wanna choose GPT for UEFI. Now, we're gonna create a new one. And the first disk we're gonna create is 024M, capital M for one gig. All right, now we're gonna choose our free space and 31 gigs and we're just gonna hit enter. So now we have two file system, SDA1 and SDA2. So now we're gonna scroll up to SDA1, hit over to type, and then scroll up to EFI system because that will be our EFI boot disk. And then SDA2 will be our data. Go over to write, and then type in yes, and quit. And that's it, it will restart the installer. It's gonna go in and say it doesn't have a UFI, but you see two disks now, SDA1 and SDA2. So what you do is go to SDA1, I'm gonna format it at FAT32 because it's a blank disk. Name it ESP, hit enter. Do you wanna format? Yes. And then that's it. That's the EFI is uh, done. Now SDA2, we're gonna select that. We're gonna format to EXT4. We're gonna call it Bliss OS, format partition. Would you like to install a prepared OTA update? I hit no because I, I'm playing around with storage and stuff like that. You need more storage if you're gonna do yes. Um, now from here, you could choose either Grub2 or REFND. Uh, now I've played with Grub2 for a very long time and I want to have a prettier bootloader. So I decided to choose REFIND instead. It's up to you. You could choose Grub if you want, but I'm gonna choose REFIND. Now this takes about like five minutes, maybe less, depending on your speed of your VM. Once it's done, all you have to do is either reboot or you could run it. So I'm gonna reboot the system just to make sure everything went properly. And here we have our bootloader. Now, once you choose this the first time, it's gonna remember this setting. So boot from Bliss 14, you see that little icon? This is all you have to do. And then you're gonna see the boot up. And here we have it guys, the first time we boot it. Now you do have an option to choose if you want Bliss Launcher or this, you can play around with whatever settings you want. So in my case, I'm just gonna choose Bliss Launcher and hit always. And that's it guys. And that's how you install Bliss OS onto your Proxmox. Anyway, that is it guys. I always wanted uh, some sort of Android installation on my server just so I could run those apps that are particularly only installable through Android or iPhone and then have it in a server environment instead of having to use it off my phone every time. So 
that's my main purpose. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say Minority Cave, hack till it hurts.